Welcome to the world of Middle-earth, a place teeming with magic, mythical creatures, and epic battles between good and evil. From elves to hobbits, from wizards to dark lords, the world of J.R.R. Tolkien is rich with history, and there's so much more to it than what we see in the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit films. The lore behind Middle-earth spans thousands of years, with gods, angels, and legendary creatures all playing a role in the story. While you may not have time to read all the epic texts that Tolkien wrote, here's a detailed look at some of the key players and events that shaped this legendary world, starting with wizards. At first glance, you might think wizards in The Lord of the Rings are just humans who happen to be trained in magic, like in many other fantasy stories. But in fact, wizards in Tolkien's world are much more than that. They are low-level angels. These are supernatural beings called the Astari. Get ready for more names. There are five of them, Saruman the White, Gandalf the Grey, Radagast the Brown, and the two mysterious blue wizards. The Astari are different from wizards in other stories because their power doesn't come from learning magic spells from ancient tomes. They were sent by higher beings, not because of their magical knowledge, but because of their inherent power. The wizards are meant to help the free peoples of Middle-earth stand against evil, though the results are well, not exactly a success. Saruman, the leader of the five wizards, starts off noble, but his mind is soon corrupted by his obsession with power. Radagast, a well-meaning wizard, gets distracted by the beauty of nature and animals, to the point where he almost forgets about the growing darkness. The two blue wizards go off into the far east of Middle-earth and, well, no one really knows what happened to them. Some speculate they might have started magical cults, but it's Gandalf who stays true to his quest, helping the people of Middle-earth and playing a key role in defeating Sauron's forces. Who sent them? Now, who exactly sent these wizards to Middle-earth? That brings us to Eru Iluvatar, the godlike figure in Tolkien's world. At the beginning of everything, there was only Iluvatar and a vast, empty void, timeless and boring. So, Iluvatar decided to create beings to keep him company. These beings were the Ainur, angels of great power. The Ainur were split into two main groups, the Valar, who are powerful guardians of the world, and the Maiar, their servants. The wizards, or Istari, are part of the Maiar, which means they're not even the most powerful of these angelic beings, but still far beyond the powers of mortals. Iluvatar, in his infinite creativity, had the Ainur sing a song together, which shaped the world and all that exists within it. The harmony of their song brought Middle-earth into being. However, there was one Ainur who wasn't content to just be part of the choir. Enter Melkor. Melkor, the most powerful of the Valar, decided he wanted to sing his own song, separate from the harmony of the others. From his discordant song came much of the evil and suffering in the world. Even from his name, Melkor, you can tell he's trouble. He was a lonely, rebellious figure, and though he was incredibly intelligent and strong, he didn't want to follow the lead of the other Valar. Instead, he sought to dominate and corrupt. Melkor's rebellion led to the creation of some of the most terrifying beings in Middle-earth, such as the Balrogs, fallen Maya, who serve him. So Gandalf, though he seems like just a kindly old wizard, is actually a low-level angel, which explains how he can face off against beings like the Balrog, who is, essentially, his equal in power. Melkor's influence also led to the creation of many dark creatures, including dragons and trolls, which brings us to the more physical, non-angelic creatures in the world. Other divine creations. While Melkor was busy corrupting everything he touched, the other Valar were creating things in more positive, cooperative ways. Manwe, one of the Valar, made the great eagles, majestic creatures who would play important roles throughout the stories. Aula, the Valar of craftsmanship, created the dwarves, beings known for their great skills in mining and smithing. Yavanna, Aula's wife, and the Valar of nature, created the plants, and animals of Middle-earth. But perhaps her greatest creation were the Ents, towering, sentient, tree-like creatures 
who would protect the forests. While the Valar were busy shaping the world, Iluvatar, the supreme creator, personally crafted two very special races, men and elves. These races are unique because they were created directly by Iluvatar, and that makes them stand out from the other creatures in the world. Sorry, dwarves, as special as they are, they were created by Aule, not Iluvatar. Men versus Elves. Of the two, men are Iluvatar's favorite creation. This may seem strange given that Elves are immortal, deeply connected to the land, and often seen as the most noble of creatures. But men are given a unique gift, the gift of death. This is actually considered a blessing in Tolkien's world. Men are not bound to the world forever like Elves. They live shorter lives, but in return, they can choose their own path. Their lives are not part of the great music of creation, like the elves. Men have free will in a way that no other creatures do. Elves, by contrast, are tied to the fate of the world. They are immortal and eternally linked to the land and its history. Because of this, elves have a deep connection to nature and the world itself, which makes them appear somewhat detached from the concerns of mortals. Their immortality can also be seen as a kind of curse. They can never truly escape the pain and suffering that accompanies living forever. This is why they often seem distant or reluctant to engage in mortal struggles. The Orcs. Now let's talk about one of the darkest creations in Middle-earth, the Orcs. Melkor, being the twisted being he was, couldn't create creatures as perfect as elves or men. So he corrupted some of them, warping them into hideous, evil creatures. Orcs are the result of this horrific manipulation. This, of course, led to epic wars between good and evil, with Melkor's corrupted creations fighting against the forces of light. The history of the Orcs is a tragic one, as they are a twisted reflection of what men and elves could have been. They are the product of Melkor's endless lust for power and his desire to corrupt all that was beautiful in the world. This corruption would have lasting consequences for all of Middle-earth. Sauron, the Dark Lord. By the time of the Lord of the Rings, Melkor is gone, banished into the void, but his legacy continues through his most devoted lieutenant, Sauron. Sauron was once a servant of Melkor, one of the Maiar, who followed his master's teachings. After the downfall of Melkor, Sauron tries to take over Middle-earth himself, using a powerful ring to focus his magical abilities. While Sauron is incredibly dangerous, it's important to remember that he was originally just a minor spirit in the grand scheme of things. But his ambition and cunning make him the perfect villain for the Third Age. His creation of the One Ring, which contains much of his own power, becomes the focal point of the entire story. But, as we'll see, he's not as invincible as he seems. And finally, hobbits. Hobbits are one of the most beloved races in Middle-earth, yet they're also the most mysterious. Though they share similarities with dwarves, like living underground and being short, hobbits are actually a subspecies of men. There's very little written about their origins, except that they are related to men. Despite their lack of grandeur compared to the great elves or powerful wizards, hobbits play an absolutely crucial role in the fate of the world. Their small size and humble nature make them seem unimportant. But when the One Ring is found, it is a hobbit, Frodo Baggins, who is chosen to carry it to Mount Doom. Hobbits prove that even the smallest person can change the course of the future. Conclusion, and that's a much deeper look at Middle-earth. As you can see, the history of this world is filled with gods, angels and mortals, who all play a role in the grand story of good versus evil. Tolkien's world is complex and layered, with countless characters, races and mythologies interwoven into a grand narrative. While this is just a glimpse into the vastness of Middle-earth, it's enough to show how much more there is beneath the surface of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit. Whether you're just starting out or have been a fan for years, Middle-earth stories continue to captivate and inspire. And with so much more to explore, one can only wonder what other secrets Tolkien's world might still hold.